Blog Talk Radio. You're listening to the Psychic Coffee Shop Podcast Network. Welcome to the Saeed Coffee Shop. I'm Ace tonight, and tonight I have with me Amanda and some skulls. How are you, darling? Oh, I'm doing great. How are you, Ace? Oh, I'm doing fabulous. I'm so glad to have you in the co-host seat. For our normal listeners, Amanda's well, going to be you. joining us in about twice a month. Um, and we're going to be talking about other things psychic. Um, so she's going to take the co-host seat for a while. I'm going to still have authors on. We're still taking your calls during the second part of the show. But Amanda, you have some crystal skulls. Now, you don't own Max. Let's clear that up. You don't own Max. Who do you own? No. Who are you caretaking for? I'm the caretaker for Chola, which is a... I think he's an ancient skull. I had recent uh, confirmation that he's not a what's considered a contemporary skull, which is anything mm-hmm. that was uh, created within the last hundred years. Uh, he's from Peru. Mm-hmm. And so he's from Peru. Describing for our listeners, I've met him. He's got really nice energy. He's he's very gentle. He's great with the ladies. All the ladies uh, find him to be really cuddly. Uh, he he would be considered an Anunnaki skull. Uh, the the backside of his head is elongated, and he's very unusual because there's a snake carved. In, into the skull that winds around from the very back to over the top of the head. And there are actually several different types of crystals that have been inlaid in different parts of the skull, including the teeth, the eyes of the snake. And it, and it looks like there's two pyramids that are shown on the sides of the snake. Um, he also has some carvings of lightning bolts uh, and spirals. Um, he's supposed to represent uh, Pachamama, who was the uh, the goddess deity of the Incans. Um, and, you know, I think that she has some uh, reptilian elements. Uh, there's a cave close to where the skull was found that has two snakes carved into the entrance. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Now, did you discover him, come into possession of him and smuggle him out? How did he come to live with you? <laughs> yeah, it would have been more exciting if I had been an Indiana Jones vet. But uh, what had happened is he he was... Uh, brought out of Peru uh, by a group of people who were Reiki masters. They took a trip out there. They met with a shaman in Cusco, and the shaman brought out the skull and gave it to one of the ladies and said, this has to go to America. It, it's needed there. And she took it to Machu Picchu. She took it to all the ancient sites so it could soak up really good energy. And then she brought it uh, to Western New York. And she said she had it for maybe three or four months, and she just felt it wasn't supposed to go to her. It was supposed to uh, be worked with by someone else. And she brought it to a psychic fair um 
and and I happened to be there, and it was the weirdest skull I had ever seen. I I've collected about 250 crystal skulls, and I'd never seen mm-hmm. one like this. And so I walked up to her and I said, "There, this isn't a normal skull, is it?" And she said, "No, it isn't." And I said, "It's supposed to go to somebody specific." Am I correct? And she said, yes. And I said, uh, do you think it could be me? And she said, I think so. So I bought him and I left. And um, later on, I found out her partner said the person who's supposed to buy him is going to come in, buy him, and leave. And that's what I had done. Right. And I, uh-huh. I brought Chola to to Max. Um, uh, Joanne Parks, who is the caretaker of Max, um, brings Max to different places uh, throughout the United States. And I've brought my skull to sit with Max a few times. So they're well acquainted. All uh-huh. right. Well, some people believe that they are um, like CDs or hard drives that are stored information or stored energy. A lot of people see crystals the same way. What's your view on that? I I would agree because you figure all of these um, artifacts, you know, crystals are artifacts of the earth. Um, they, it, the thought is that when you carve a, a skull into a crystal, it acquires an intelligence and a personality. And there are some people that when they go into a rock shop, they'll be drawn to a specific crystal and they won't know why. And it's kind of like that with crystal skulls too. Some of them, you look at them and you make a connection with them. And um, it's very personal. Um, Different people are attracted to different materials. And, yes, when you meditate with them, some of them will have information um, either from past lives or past civilizations. Um, So, yeah, Mm -hmm. I I absolutely subscribe to that way of thinking. Um, What are your thoughts about, you know, if they ever put the whole 13, because there's supposedly 13 quartz skulls part of the max – Plan or the Max, we'll call it the Max program. Um, mm-hmm. If you ever put them thirteen into a circle, that something would happen. What's your thought? I think my my thought is uh, there probably have been thirteen seed skulls that could be related to human beings. Um, I know there's Shana Ra and Max and the Blue Corn Maiden, um, and there's some question about the Mitchell Hedges skull, uh, but the the thought is it would create an energetic frequency that would raise uh, consciousness. I personally Mm -hmm. think that... It isn't necessary to have them all in the same place because if these skulls are resonating with a special frequency, time and space Mm -hmm. is immaterial. So they are Mm -hmm. communicating and, and working together regardless of their proximity to one another. I also know Uh that um, there's a, there's a book that lists several different skulls, many more than 13, uh, that have been right. considered activated. So uh, to me, any skull can provide the means to uh, attune the person that works with it to a higher level of consciousness. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that, you know, well, what about your little guy? What are some of the things you've seen him do, seen him activate, information you've gotten from him? Well, he um, 
it feels like he has an extraterrestrial origin. Um, I mm-hmm. He's very healing. Um, I've noticed that people, especially Reiki masters, are very, very drawn to him. Uh, they've mm-hmm. held him and felt uh, a vibration coming from him, usually in the right. heart center. And... Mm-hmm. Um, I, I noticed too that when my pets are around him, they'll interact with him. They'll either lick him or they'll rub up against him. So um, uh-huh. he's he's not one of the most active skulls. I've actually had skulls that have moved um, over the course of time from one position to another on a table. Um, he isn't uh-huh. one that's done that, but um, he he definitely brings a, a feeling of peace to people that right. have interacted with him. Mm-hmm. Right, and I find him to be, uh, I don't know, it's kind of like for me, because I operate on some different frequencies when it comes to us, I find him to be very comfortable, very relaxing to be around. Um, he isn't like you know standing there yelling at you. Um, yeah, it's very gentle way. Um, because I don't know who remember who had one, but someone else had an, an what's considered a ancient skull, and he was just as rude as can be. He'd be yelling out messages of people walking by, you know, kind of like panhandling. I'm like, no, I can't work with you. You're just in the corner. <laughs> Yeah, um, and and that's that's another reason why um, if somebody is selecting a skull, you kind of have to see how you feel because um, I I actually I bought one from China that looked great online. Um, I'm I do spend a lot of time on eBay. I will confess that right here, right now, and. I unpacked the skull, and the first message I got is, well, it sure took you long enough to get me out of that box. And I was like, oh, uh-huh. excuse me. And I <laughs> I just didn't like this crystal skull, so I ended up giving her, it was a female, uh-huh. to my uh, Reiki master. And I had called her countess. But I didn't say anything mm-hmm. to my friend, and she said her name is Duchess. And I said, okay, uh-huh. I'll, I'll go with that. And this is an active skull. My friend has said when she puts her on the shelf, she will actually move. And she will mm. orient herself so that she can watch the soap operas with my friend. Uh, because uh-huh. if she doesn't have a good line of sight, she's very upset about that. And she also told my friend who she wants to sit next to and who she doesn't. It it sounds uh-huh. crazy, but when you spend time with these skulls, you, you sort of get a feel for what their personalities are. Well, and that's so, very true, and it's not crazy, you know, because I, I take in homeless Buddhas. Um, I'm not Buddhist, but, you know, I like working with that energy. And Buddhist statues have the same type of thing going on, yeah. even though they're not crystal skulls. Yeah. You know, and I have a beautiful gold Buddha. But he he has to be able to be up the, and be the highest thing in the house. If he isn't the highest <laughs> thing in the house, pandemonium occurs. Luckily, I'll step him beside Daddy. <laughs> um, and, you know, them two seem to be doing fine as shelf mates. Um, you know, Dad's like, I'll keep him in line, and I'm like, thanks, stop stealing my lighters, please. Um, for those that don't know, yes, my father has crossed over. He lives in a lovely Chinese vase now. He's very happy in there. He just steals lighters out of the house. Mm-hmm. Um, well, but and it's that case of, you know, even like non-ancient skulls, the modern day skulls, the ones that are being produced, they they are yeah. still have the ability to store an energy, still a personality, and they're going to be guided Absolutely. to somebody else's personality. Mm-hmm. Um, because they're being followed, even at modern times, they're still crystals. 
crystals in themselves have their own energy. There you go. And and crystals are ancient materials. So in a way it is mm-hmm. kind of a moot point whether something is ancient versus contemporary, but usually if someone tells you I have an ancient crystal skull, you you mm-hmm. should have a flag flag go up just because they may be trying to uh, promote an agenda, you know. Um, so again, if 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 you do a little research, um, and and if you've seen a lot of contemporary skulls, you can usually tell if something feels like it's been made with modern tools. If it's perfectly formed, everything is the right size. And some of them mm-hmm. look like they've come off an assembly line. Um, those are the ones yeah. that you would not really, yeah. But but you're right. Any skull you have is an ancient material and can provide support in whatever uh, fashion you need it. Right. And, you know, <laughs> the thing with, you know, because like at Christmas, we have crystal skulls now thanks to you. And some of them I look at and I'm like, one of the that one's a cute one, but you've been a little mouthy. I've been here, you know, there's a blue one. I think it's up by the register. That yeah. one's a little mouthy. And it's like, no, you wouldn't work in my house. The Buddha would get tired of hearing you. <laughs> I I have friends um, that used to meditate with skulls, and they started collecting them because – I got them sort of hooked on them. I am the crystal mm-hmm. skull whisperer, and uh-huh. uh, they picked up they picked up one that was they named Caesar because he did not like the husband, and the husband said uh-huh. every time I walk into the room, I feel that skull resents me. He ended up taking that skull back to the shop and saying, "You know what? Uh-huh. I need my money back because." He and I just aren't getting along. So, yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but they're very nice, very pretty. You've bought them online. What are some tips? Because I'm sure you thought you were getting, you know, a nice big skull and it looked all pretty. And then you get it home mm-hmm. and, and it's not that big and is really, mm-hmm. you know, soapstone, not really like, emer- you know, if you were buying an amethyst one, it's really not an amethyst one. It's more of a soapstone one. What's some tips you can give people? Well, I would, um, there's one uh, buyer or one seller, I'm sorry, that their skulls, I, they're very high, high quality. And if anyone wants to text me after this program, I'll be happy to give their name. Um, they, I, any skull I've ever bought from them, they've been accurate in uh, describing the material it is. You, you want to look for people who describe the dimensions of the skull um, and show multiple directions, um, different uh, vantage points. You see what the skull looks like all the way around and even underneath. You're going to look for cracks. You want to make sure if there are any cracks visible that they're uh, not, that they're solid. You can, you can have like a hairline crack, but, but the structure is, is sound. Um, you also want to look at the material that's being listed, and you can do a comparison to see uh, the cost of the material just in its raw form, and then skulls of similar size. If something is very, very cheap, you you have to mm-hmm. wonder, okay, is it really, uh, like you're saying, if it's soapstone, um, if it's uh, an inferior type of jade, um, and you want to watch for coral. Uh, sometimes coral is just plastic, red plastic, or howlite that's been dyed. 
Um, same with turquoise. If you look for a turquoise skull, sometimes it's simply dyed howlite. And and when you look mm-hmm. at the two crystals, you can see the difference in in the structure. Mm-hmm. Same with opalite. Opalite is a man-made material. It's beautiful, and a lot of people are attracted to the skulls made of opalite because they're, they glow. They have a, like a rainbow glow to them, and they almost look like a type of moonstone, but that's actually a man-made material. You really yeah. want to stick with you want to stick with natural materials, either metal-based or um the the original um crystals if if you can right and you want to also you know make sure that if you get one you don't like that you you know know where it goes to you know cuz sometimes you're just yeah. the mule you know like the yep. reiki master that brought in Thoreau. she was just technically his mule pick me up and carry me over mm-hmm. yep and and that's it. Sometimes I know I've gotten crystal skulls and I unpack them and there's just something about the type of stone it is. They may have accurately labeled it. The pictures could look great, but there's something when I hold it in my hand, it doesn't feel good to me. And that's usually mm-hmm. when I would either turn around and you know check with someone, see if they like it and either give it to them or sell it to someone who feels comfortable because, again, um, different materials resonate uh, with different people. There are some people right. that love Moldavite. Some some people it's just too intense of an energy to work with. Right. Um, and so what about the everyday care, you know, Example, you know, the Buddhas, I make sure they stay dusted. If I've got to move them, they get wrapped in silk. I've got one who loves to travel okay. with me, so he lives in the bag. What do you do with yours? Um, what I do is if they're starting to get cloudy, um, there's several ways you can clear them. Um, if they're not made of either selenite or halite or some other salt-based material, you can uh, run them under cold water. Um, you can put them in rock salt or sea salt or Himalayan pink salt. You can put them mm-hmm. in the moonlight. Um, you can put them on the ground with the top exposed to the moon. That can clear the energy. You can smudge them with a sage smudge stick. You can even uh, use Reiki energy to clear them. And also, Mm -hmm. um, if you put put them near selenite, citrine, or Herkimer diamonds, these are types of crystals Mm -hmm. that will clear whatever crystals are around them. And then to transport them, you can do whatever you would do for a fragile crystal. You would, you know, cushion it. I know that Joanne has a velvet lined box that was specifically made to put Max in. Um, Uh My, you know, unless my skulls are big, I tend to just sort of wrap them carefully in a blanket so there's not any impact damage. Um, But yeah, you can you can uh, dust them, display them. Um, you know, anoint them with um, essential oils. Certain materials, if you have a small uh, fire opal or regular opal skull, you want to put some oil in there to keep it from becoming too brittle. Right. Um, And to help keep it um, moisturized. Have that's you ever had yeah. ones that, in my, that that required specific attention? Like, it's not required, you know, everyday life. You know, like Kwan Yins, they require, you know, water. 
have you ever had that with any of the skulls? Like, you know, I need water beside me or I need, you know, this or that beside me? Um, I think what I noticed with the turquoise ones, they like to be around either straw matting or a woven basket. Um, and I know anything that's uh, like a type of jade from China, I think being around water is good because it's, um, it, it's around chi flow um so I, those are the two types that that come to mind as far as elements nearby um but i i think mostly if if you give uh, a nice display um and and you put something underneath them that's soft and don't try to crowd too many on on a on a shelf so they don't fight for space because <laughs> they are like right. little kids. He's poking me. <laughs> uh huh. So. I can't see the TV, you know, like the duck, cause she requires, you know, the soap operas. There you go. Yeah. Duchess probably gets peeled grapes and uh, chamomile tea every night. So that's a little too uh, high maintenance for me. Luckily, my skulls uh-huh. don't need that kind of nurturing. Uh, they're pretty. They're pretty right. um, self-regulating. Right now, you working with the skulls has enabled you to develop a really interesting style of reading. Um, and that is the Serengeti Stone readings. Can you tell, tell our listeners a little bit about those? Sure, thank you. Um, I came up with this system uh, basically because I I love working with crystals and tumble stones, and I wanted to come up with a way to do a reading that would be very friendly to people if they didn't know anything about tarot uh and and I'm an animal lover I just I have a feel for different types of animals and um so when this I kind of downloaded this system believe it or not we we were talking in the um in the crystal lotus shop about meditation uh this whole system came to me when I was playing gin rummy with my mother. Um, We were, Mm -hmm. you know, we're playing and all of a sudden I got the message, start with the tortoise. And I'm like, okay, I I didn't know what that was. So I wrote down tortoise and then somebody dictated to me the entire outside of the board. Mm -hmm. And, by the end of the uh, game, I had the outer board figured out. It's it's like a wheel with different animals on the outside. And then later on, I added uh, another set of animals on the inside because the the prospect is the more someone's worked on various issues in their life, you're going to see the stones landing closer and closer to the center, which would be a harmonious balance point. But if stones uh, spread into different animals uh, far away from the center, then that that's something we can talk about. You know, what is out of balance in your life and how can you uh, bring it more into harmony? So that's kind of the overall thought behind Serengeti stones. Mm -hmm. And it's very pretty, Matt. You know, she's going to also be teaching people how to do those here very soon um, and producing sets and stuff. We're going to be in the production with that. Well, Amanda, Mm -hmm. you want to take a break? And then we'll come back and, you know, after we hear a word from our sponsors, we'll take some questions for some Very fast-paced, you know, just simple questions, simple answer readings. Sounds great. Okay, darling. Well, let me take a break, and we'll be right back. All right. 
and you'll find us at www.themagichappens.com, your free online magazine. Are you looking for loving, caring, spiritual answers? Then you need to give Rainy a call. Her number is 303 416 2977. She's able to give you a reading, see what your life path holds, plus what the angels and crossover loved ones has to say about it. Visit PsychicRainyLove.com for more details. And remember, Rainy spelled R A I N E. As a busy modern woman, I'm constantly on the go. Having to make multiple stops while I'm out shopping or getting things done just doesn't work for me. That's why I love going to the Crystal Lotus Shop for every one of my metaphysical needs. They have all the basics like stones, candles, sage, plus they carry jewelry, herbs, cards, a variety of unique gifts, and several other items you're probably looking for. Uh Uh-oh, sounds like my husband's old college injury flared up again. That's okay. I can count on the team of healers at the Crystal Lotus to fix him right up. They offer massage, Reiki, Kalamni, as well as other energy modalities, all performed by licensed, highly trained, and gifted practitioners. And while he's being taken care of, I'll sit down and get some guidance by one of their accomplished psychic readers. Oh, and did I mention they do custom orders and have gift certificates as well? They even offer yoga several days a week for all levels of experience. Plus, the last Saturday of every month, they have Psychic Saturday, where they offer discounts on readings as well as many healing sessions. Stop in to meet Shauna and the rest of the family there. They're located at 89 Old Main Plaza in St. Albans, where the Loop Pharmacy used to be. Or give them a call at 304-729-8055. Crystal Lotus. Taking the spirit where the body cannot go. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with, all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg rolls showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. Did you know that you can have a reading with Asen in person? Or you can reach him by phone, chat, or even text message. You should really check out his site, asenite.com, or give him a call. His number is 304-584-3592. Hi, welcome, relax, have a cup of your favorite topics with your hosts, Asen Knight and Rain Love. There's nothing like a good conversation to warm your soul and give your spirit a break now and then. Aesid and Love have such a wonderful way of exploring topics like psychic phenomena, important topics in our daily lives from a psychic's point of view, and you never know who else will stop by. The Psychic Coffee Shop, live on Blog Talk Radio. So come on in. We made a fresh cup of java just for you. All right, and welcome back. Check out our sponsors. Amanda's down at the Crystal Lotus giving readings also. But Amanda, what's your office number again? It's 304-729-4344. Right. And you guys can book a phone appointment if you're not in the West Virginia area. She, you move, let's tell them, you, you know, your full thing. You moved down from New York to West Virginia. 
Why'd you move yeah. here? I've never even asked you that one. Why'd you move here? <laughs> well, when um, I moved back to to Western New York uh, ten years ago, and um, it, I I really was not ready to go back to the the deep uh, winters, and. Um, it just was quite an adjustment. I had lived in Colorado for 20 years, and it was a different environment in terms of, you know, weather and um, it just, you know, different people, uh, you know, the way they approach things. And luckily, we all have the same kind of sense of humor, and I made great friends. But I just felt I can't do the winters anymore. It's just, it was too much. It was too depressing. So uh, yeah. last year I I took several trips down, a little bit down south. I was thinking I was moving to North Carolina. But every time I, I went through West Virginia, it's like, I really love these mountains. I'm loving this terrain. And I finally said, you know, um, let's check out West Virginia. And when I walked into the Crystal Otis shop, you know, uh, uh, my heart went pitter pat. <laughs> it was, I, I just connected. Uh, yeah, and you were there. You were there in all your uh-huh. glory, and you were doing readings. And I just kind of uh-huh. waltzed in the way I do. I, I waltz everywhere. And I just said, I don't know if you're in the market for another reader, but I described my Serengeti Stone readings, and everyone there was very receptive. And I did, I thought I was only going to be there 15 minutes, hand out a few, uh, you know, business cards, say hi, and then check, check other places out. And I ended up staying for five hours. It's just that mm-hmm. kind of a place. And we all just, right. we got along great, and then I decided, okay, I'm moving here. And it, right. ever since I made that decision, everything fell into place. And um, I I just like, it's a slower pace here. People are much uh, more, they're more open to just having general conversations um, it's not as fast paced as it is up in in New York. Right. So, so I'm. Yeah, and I'm it isn't it. as but, fast paced. It's not moving as quickly as it is. And something's real interesting, and it's kind of happened with the Lo- Crystal Lotus shop. Um, it just seems like people start kind of getting called, have been called back to the mountains. I think it's the quartz crystals hidden way deep into the mountains. That's just me. Could be. So, guys, we're going to be taking calls in order, and we're going to be, okay. you know, we have to have your first name, your birth date, and a direct question. And me and a man is going to switch off. I'm going to do the first one, and Amanda will do the second one in line. When I say direct questions, I'm not saying, like, tell me about my love life. That is a general greeting. We don't have time for it. Those you call for an appointment for, okay? So let's go to 562. 562, you're on the air. Well, maybe. There we go. Hi, this is Yvonne, and my birthday is August 14, 1984. And my question is... And how can I help you? Okay, and my question is, do you see me receiving my SSI benefits? Have we done two tries yet? Uh, yes. Just my, yeah, just you'll be the, getting them. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> do you know yeah. when? Um, it looks to me to be probably within the next two months, honey. Okay, great. Okay, thank okay. you so much. You're welcome, darling. Watch your paperwork. I want you to keep extra copies of it because you'll okay. need it five years down the road. Okay, awesome. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You have a great evening. You too. All right. Now it's Amanda's turn with 904. 904, you're on the air. Um, hi. 
Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, this is Hello, Patty. I'm calling from Florida. Patty? Patty? Yeah, I'm calling from Florida. Well, hi, Patty. And what's your birthday, Tommy? What's your... Oh, do I have to tell you? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have to be the year. <laughs> Can you just do the months and the day? January 16th. <laughs> we okay. need just oh, yeah. literally we need the year to make so sure that you're 18. But yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm way over 18. <laughs> okay. okay. So you're a prior, prior to the, right prior to 1960. <laughs> okay. There you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had called about a month ago and spoke to Asun and um. Thought I had a job coming through, you know, talking with you, and my feeling, too, felt like it was going to happen, but it didn't, and I never heard from them, and I think they didn't even review, even look at the application, because usually you get notification from, like, that was through Indeed, and I don't think they even looked at it, but I've got another couple things uh, lined up. I have an interview next week, and and then I have another... Yeah, I'm just looking for a couple of little part-time things. That's mostly how it is around here, the area I'm in. So I have an interview next Tuesday, and um, then I have a connection with somebody that works within a business for another part-time job. So I just want to see if you see those coming through at all or anything else you get. Well, it feels like... And and I I can totally relate. I understand it's it's always really hard and very stressful. Um, it feels like one of the jobs um, is it for a shop of some kind? No, one is at the port like, at where the where, where the cruise ships come in, and the other one's within a hotel. Okay, the one in the hotel feels like it's it's a possibility. Um, but there may be a delay. Um, the uh-huh. one in the port, it feels like it'd be more enjoyable. Right. I feel like you can. I feel like you could connect with people much more easily and enjoy it and relax more. It feels like the other one is a little more. Um, it feels like there'd be more stress connected with it. Um, so I, I kind of feel like the poor one feels better. Um, and I also feel like when you uh, go in there, you're going to make connections that could open up other doors and other possibilities. Okay, mm-hmm. wonderful. Yeah, I was thinking that one would be better. The other one was just an additional if I wanted some extra. Right, right. And yeah. and I, I think um, – I just I don't feel like you're going to connect with the people as as well. Yeah. yeah so I I go for the yeah. Good luck. Go get them. Well, thank you, and I appreciate it, and thank you. I enjoyed your story. All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. Let's go over to six four six six four six. How can I help you? Hello. Okay. Well, I guess one's listening to us and working at the same time. Sorry about that. So let's go on to two five one two five one. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Hi. How can I help you? Uh, yeah, on September 4th, 1950, just want to know if I'm going to be moving from my present uh, address to a new one. You do, and it'll be probably in about one, two, three. I'd say within four weeks. Really? That's fast. Really? Wow. Wow. That would be really fast. Mm. It It is, but I feel like it's going to be good for you. You what, darling? It would be in another state. Yes. You're going to need a semi, honey. You're not going to be able to just move in the car. No, that's true. You're not going to. No, I have to sell a house, too. So I don't know about four weeks. It takes longer. Yeah. Well, 
might be longer. Than That's that. what I'm getting. It may be longer, okay. but I feel more so you're going to be packing and everything within four weeks. Interesting. All okay. right. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, Thank good you. evening. All right, so let's go over to 267. Amanda, did you get back with me, honey? Yes. Yes, sir. Awesome. Okay, 267, you're on the air. Hi, um, my name is Donna. My birthday is April 21st, 1962. And um, I wanted to ask you if um, I was in kind of a relationship with someone a while ago and we drifted apart and we're talking now. He he drives over the road and stuff like that. Do you see us um, connecting again and our relationship? Uh, what I was, when you were talking, it felt like it's very, like a really sweet reconnection. Like he's done a lot of soul searching and I think he's had a lot of time to think things through. Uh, he's making different decisions now in his life. Um, it feels like he's more emotionally available now. I think he's cleared out either relationships in his life or emotional baggage he had. Um, So it feels like he's more capable of following through on a relationship. I just feel like he, he didn't make time for your, your relationship to blossom, but you've had, you've had a long connection with him and he still feels what he felt before. So I I get a yes, and I feel like it's going to be a step-by-step process, but you're going to forge a stronger bond, and I feel like he's going to open up more this time. Oh, okay. And do you feel that um, the, the other person is completely, totally out of his life? At this point, yes. I I think... Um, I feel like the other person was really, really clingy and needed a lot of attention. And I think it's like he took a crowbar and finally disengaged (laughs) the other relationship. And uh, it feels like it's finished and he's clear enough to be able to make different choices. Oh, okay. Um, That's not me, right? No, no, no. No, it's the other person. No, it's the other person. Oh, okay. Can I just ask you one more thing? Because this is a, a, weird, a weird thing. We were together, and then he went off with her. Did, did you see him having a stronger connection with her, or was that just a, a mistake he had made? I, I feel it was... Um, I think her personality, there was something familiar about it, and he sort of uh, went to what was familiar to him, which was not healthy. Um, And sometimes I think people make those choices because they're afraid of either committing to something deeper where they'd have to be vulnerable and I feel like he he just sort of grabbed that relationship because it was there. Um, but I think he knows now why he got involved with her. And I, I don't see that he has any longing to go back to that. Okay, but he does with me? Yes. Oh, okay, thank you. And that was right on point. He did have time to think and so did I and it's just a waiting game I just don't feel, I don't really want to wait too much longer before I walk away but do you see me being soon I I feel like it's it's going to come along faster I don't think he would have reached out to you if he wasn't interested I I think I think he wants to to work on it and it will take a little bit of patience, but I don't think it'll take forever. 
Okay. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. We have time for one more, and that will be seven. I mean, nine seven eight. Nine seven eight. You're on the air with me. Oh wow! I lucked out. Well, Thank you so much, Kathleen. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> August fourth, fifty-seven. And how can Mario. I help you, Kathleen? Well, so many questions, so little time. Uh, <laughs> let's see. There was a guy, <laughs> there was a guy that I used to live with, and I met him. Uh, oh God, twenty years ago or more, and we've always kept in touch. We broke up a few times. We've kept in touch. Mm-hmm. Uh, we spoke on the phone a few weeks ago. He got pissed at me, and he says, I never want to hear from you again, <laughs> and all yeah. this, you know, BS. And mm-hmm. he's someone I'm always going to love. But he, in driving distance, it's a bit of a drive. But I want him right. to, I want to live with him again. But going down to where he lives is not a safe area for me. He doesn't no. want to come up this end. Do you ever see us right. reconnecting? You do, but you're looking at a couple of years, honey. He's already 67. I understand that, but he'll move, and it'll be a couple of years. Would it be to move in with me? It just means you two move in together somewhere else. Really? And one more thing yeah. can I ask when I'll mm-hmm. hear from him again? It looks to me to be about two weeks after he calms down. Because I don't even think he was huffy about the conversation going on. Yeah, I canceled a date twice because there's someone I'm seeing and he knows about it. But he does right. not want to move up here and um, mm-hmm. to me, it's like, give me all or nothing. Right. Um, and that's totally what should be going on here. I think you're in the right position with that. But what I'm saying is this was more so he had an argument with somebody else and then came and argued with you. Oh. Was it a female? It doesn't look to be. It looks to me to be like a banker. A banker? Yeah, like, you know, he went to the bank. This is pure example. You know, he went to the bank, checked money. They had messed something up. He's mad at them. He comes back. He's having a conversation with you. And he goes into an argument with you. Okay, because my birthday is in August, August 4th. Am I going to hear from him? Right. Yeah, before then. All right, but you do see us living together in a few would yeah. you, could you tell me yeah. give me a time frame how many years I would say it's going to be about two and you both move and we both move okay yeah. well hopefully we're both alive <laughs> you will be you guys have still 67. got many years and please you both are you're doing good semi fairly good health Still very active. Still have a lot of life force energy. Okay. okay. All right. Listen, I thank I thank you so much for the reading. You really You're welcome. gave me you a boost tonight. Evening. Okay. Good. You too. Thank you. Right. Good night. Thank you. Good night. All right, Amanda. Oh, let me pull her back over here. Yes. Oh. You keep popping over on mute. I've got to get used to having your number there. Sorry. So you've got (laughs) classes going on. I've got classes going on, so let's talk about them for a minute before we end the show. Um, Tomorrow night I'm teaching numerology at the Crystal Lotus. Then that following Tuesday you're teaching what class? Crystal Skulls. And I'm going to have So how to work with Crystal Skulls. Uh-huh. Right, and I'll have Chola in the uh, in the shop, and we're going to talk about how uh, the uh, the snake on his head uh, 
seems to match up with the Serpent Mound in Ohio. There are some connections, uh, and I'd like to mm-hmm. kind of discuss that with the class. Cool. And then, let me see, then I have a tarot practice for my tarot 101, and then you're doing something different. Now, normally the last Saturday of the month is Psychic Saturday. I'm going to be in an event, so we moved it to the 20th, where Amanda will be doing readings with, you know, and I will be doing readings. But you're doing something that instead that Saturday. Talk about that for yeah, a moment. It's, okay, it's called Supernatural Saturday. And I wanted to start a series of get-togethers. It's less of a class than it is a discussion group. And basically, Mm -hmm. I wanted to give people a chance if they have interest in either mysterious beasts or mysterious phenomena or ghosts, to be able to get together with like-minded people to share experiences and just talk about the weird things going on out in West Virginia and elsewhere. So uh, this uh-huh. Supernatural Saturday is going to be a week from this Saturday, and um, we're, we're going to get together for about an hour and a half starting at 1 o'clock and just see what people have to talk about. Um, I also want to mention we're going to be doing a Psychic Saturday this Saturday. Um, right. at the shop all day. So um, in addition yeah. to all of these classes. Yep. And, you know, Psychic Saturday is a time where maybe, you know, you, you know, me and Amanda both charge more than the $15 for our readings. It's a time for us to give back to our customers. Um, we also, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes have guest readers come in. Um, but it's a, day, it's, um, a dollar per minute, and that's probably – the cheapest both of us are anywhere. Um, now, Amanda, right. how can you know, our listeners from, you know, that cannot get to St. Albans, um, how can they contact you? Uh, they reason? can call. They can call. Um, you, they can either uh, PM me uh, through Facebook. Uh, my name is Amanda K. Renzi, R-E-N-Z-I. You can like me on Facebook, send me uh, a message, and the phone number to call uh, for reading is 304-729-4344, and we'll schedule an appointment and go from there. Mm -hmm. Right, and you're Eastern time zone like me, so that means the office doesn't open until 11, um, 11 a.m., and normally mm-hmm. we close up shop at 7. Um, mm-hmm. But if you get her voicemail, you can leave a voicemail, and she can reach back to you. Um, and then, you know, you can see you can reach me at aceandnight.com. I'm so glad to have you as a co-host. It's going to be fun. I think next time, oh. let's uh, Let's have a talk about um, ghosts. Oh, when you come on in two weeks. Awesome. All right. All right. So until then, guys, you guys have a great weekend. I'll see you later, Amanda. You have a good evening, honey. You too. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Choosing a psychic is hard, and you don't want to waste time finding one that's right for you. You've thought about calling into the show, but you want more privacy than that? With services from phone, email, chat, text, and his network availability, you need to check out Asen's website at asennight.com. Just a few clicks and you can have your own personal, private psychic reading. On asennight.com, you can also find out about VIP packages, scheduling parties and events, and signing up for his classes. What are you waiting for? Talk to Asen today. You're listening to the Psychic Coffee Shop Podcast Network.